joining uh, this uh, panel on behalf of the uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week. We're going to go ahead and get started. And it's really great to see how many people have uh, joined the um, event so far. Um, but thank you again all for joining us. This uh, very special panel is co-hosted by the CERNA Center, CAMP, uh, Carlson Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, uh, and it is part of the Global um, Entrepreneurship Week again. Um, we're excited to see so many of you here today. We know we have students, of course, we have staff and faculty, um, we have administrators, and it's really a testament to how strong our sense of community is when we come together for these kinds of events. Uh, my name, I, I wanna give a very quick overview so that we can, of course, hear from the panelists. Uh, I am Noel Mora, the coordinator of the CERNA Center, where we promote um, and enhanced leadership, uh, self-advocacy, civic engagement, and uh, cultural empowerment, amongst a lot of other things for Chicanx Latinx students at Sac State. Uh, the purpose of today's panel is for us to be able to feature um, information from the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce related to um, Hispanic entrepreneurship in the Sacramento region. That's what we'll start with a, a very brief five minute um, overview. And then it's our pleasure to invite um, all of our panelists who we have here today to answer some questions related to their, their entrepreneurial journeys uh, and more so that we can encourage and inspire the students who are here in attendance. I see all of our panelists um, have joined and ju uh, just so everyone knows who our panelists are, we have um, Leslie Valdivia from Vive Cosmetics uh, and I'll give a, a, a kind of longer introduction in, in, in a little bit. Uh, Julio Cesar Ortiz from Gaspachos. We have David and Nancy Garcia from Culture. And of course, we have Omar Gonzalez from Omar Gonzalez Law. Uh, again, we'll uh, be providing a little bit more about them in, a, in just some a couple of minutes. Um, but we'll also conclude the event with a short uh, Q&A session where everyone in attendance will be able to ask uh, the panelists any questions that you might still have. So um, we're almost done with the housekeeping items. We also wanna uh, put a link in the chat for any students who are here on, um, as part of the leadership initiative. If you'd like to have your um, attendance counted for that program, please be sure to uh, just complete that short survey in the chat. Um, now you'll also see a poll appear on your screen, um, a Zoom poll, and it'll ask you what your affiliation to SAC State is. And um, we'll go ahead and leave that poll up for a couple seconds. Thank you all for participating. It really, really helps us to, to just get a sense of who's in the room. All right. Okay. All right, I think we can go ahead and close the poll. Looks like we have an overwhelming amount of uh, students in attendance, 87% of the attendance. Uh, well, we also have some staff and faculty um, and some community members, as well as maybe a couple of administrators, but it's good to see that there is a lot of students here. Um, we also want to ask you to please uh, now complete the, the uh, second beginning poll here, uh, which will ask you how familiar you are with um, just with the topic of today and entrepreneurship. Thank you. Wow, everyone is so fast at responding. Usually we'll have to play some music to to get the poll responses in, but I think we're I think we're good. Every, everybody has been participating. All right, we'll give it a couple more seconds here. All right, I guess I think we can go ahead and end this poll. And it looks like there's a lot of room for our panelists to share just um, a, a lot of information about the entrepreneurial process, since most of the attendees right now um, have shared that they're either not familiar or somewhat familiar. So just so our panelists know where 
where the uh, learning levels are in the room. Okay, now the now everyone's waiting for the program to begin, and I will not. Uh, I'll try not to disappoint you all. Um, right now, I want to quickly introduce just uh, two speakers on behalf of our um, partner organizations. The first will be uh, Associate Vice President of Strategic Student Support Programs, Dr. Vidi Diana Diaz, who will provide some opening remarks on behalf of the CAMP program. Dr. Diaz. Yes, thank you, Noel, for having me. Good afternoon. Uh, to everyone, I do want to thank the Carlson Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Cameron and Arlene, for the opportunity to partner as part of Global Entrepreneurship Week. It's a great honor to work with, with you both. Um, of course, Noel from the Cerna Center, thank you for, for leading this effort. Uh, the Sacramento Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for publishing this incredibly valuable study on Hispanics in the region that I hope will help shape the future of Sacramento and therefore California. And of course, to the, the panelists, uh, the College Assistance Migrant Program, Erika Perez for connecting alumni uh, to the CERNA Center and other panelists of Latinx background uh, to be part of this panel. And, and I'd like to start by expressing just how proud I am of this panel. Uh, as a migrant student and, and camp alumni myself, I know how challenging it was for us to, to make the decision to go to college, not unless graduate from college. And you know, we had to overcome so many barriers and many of us wouldn't be where we are today without camp. Um, but because many of us grew up with a lot of financial uncertainty, we were ra raised to value stability, to value security, um, and to take as minimal amounts of risk as possible. <laughs> um, all of our parents wanted for us was to work in an office. Um, as long as we graduated from high school and didn't end up working in, in physical labor, you know, such as in, in the fields or in the canneries um, and had a stable paycheck, you know, to our families, we had made it. And, and why would we ever risk that, right? Risk losing it. Um, entrepreneurship or opening a business has not always been encouraged in, in our family. So when I say I'm incredibly proud of this panel, I mean I am incredibly proud of this panel because not only did they reach the milestone of, of completing their education, but they had the courage to step outside of their safety net. Despite the fear, because I'm sure it was scary, despite the doubts, Despite any insecurities around being self-employed and, and, and doing it on your own, uh, you done it. Um, that is courage. That is leadership. And for that, I, I commend you and I thank you for, for being here today, for doing what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, for being vulnerable and sharing your entrepreneur journey, because I know it's not all you know, rainbows and, and, and unicorns. Um, and for sharing your challenges, but most importantly, for sharing the opportunities for growth as you went through those challenges and overcame those challenges with our students. Uh, you are truly an inspiration. I am really looking forward to, to hearing from all of you, to hearing um, the overview from the state of Hispanics as well, and having a very valuable uh, conversation as part of this event today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Diaz. And now I would like to extend uh, the same courtesy to um, our partner again for this event, the uh, Carlson Center. Cameron Law uh, is the executive director of the Carlson Center. Cameron, would you like to give a brief opening, some brief opening remarks on behalf of the center? Sure, definitely. I appreciate the opportunity and I'll be brief because I don't want to hold you back from the terrific conversation that's going to be happening. And the first thing that I want to share is uh, I got a message from uh, my team member, Arlene Miranda. She'll give you the, the wave there, but uh, record attendance here for Global Entrepreneurship Week 2021. So 
kudos to the CERNA Center and the CAMP program. We really appreciate the, the partnership and the celebration of Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, you know, one of the things that we really look at in terms of entrepreneurship is really the mindset that goes with it. And I think Dr. Diaz really hit it right on the head is, you know, when we look at entrepreneurship, it's the self-directed pursuit to create value for others. And when we create value for others, we empower ourselves. And so we hopefully walk away from listening to this panel to, to get into their mindset of, yes, there was that, that risk and that courage, but what, what really drove them um, to make that shift and take that risk to, to create value for others, right? And there's their, the why behind why they did that and would love to, to get into that um, in the panel. So um, the last thing I wanna share is just, we are a resource on campus. We're located in the library and we're here to help you no matter uh, what type of ideas you have, if it's an initiative on campus or a venture, whether that's a for-profit, non-for-profit, we wanna be part of your journey and help empower you with the entrepreneur mindset and uh, appreciate all the panelists taking the time today to share their experience and expertise and for all the partners that uh, took place to make this happen. So I'll turn it back to you, Noel. Thank you, Cameron. And thank you again, um, Dr. Diaz. So now it is my, um, also my honor, I'm just going to be honored this whole um, event because there are so many amazing people here um, to introduce Rita Gallardo Good from uh, the Sacramento Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, who will again provide a little bit of information on uh, the current state of um, of business and and the economy for Hispanic and Latinx people in the Sacramento region. Rita. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, Rita Gallardo Good, I also serve as the Director of Civic Affairs in the Office of Public Affairs and Advocacy. Um, as on behalf of the university, I also serve as the Secretary for the um, Board of Directors for the Sacramento Hispanic Chamber. And this past uh, year, we embarked on a uh, study of the Hispanic economic status of Latinos in this community and this region. Um, six counties, including Sacramento, Yolo, Yuba, Placer, El Dorado, and Sutter. And the goal really was to um, take a, a, a deep dive into what Latinos um, are contributing to the uh, region in employment, education, and the social economic status um, of Latinos when it comes to um, their uh, position in the region. Um, one thing that I am very proud to share is that um, the population within this region is at 22%. Um, and that uh, for the Latinos, 78% of the Latinos are born here in the United States. And we found that number to be surprising because of how the media portrays a lot of the, the status of Latinos when it comes to their, uh, their nationalities and um, what countries they're born in. I also like to share that part of the outcome of um, the report shared that at this time, 33.4% 30, uh, of Latinos in the region also are graduating from high schools, um, having completed their A through G requirements in order to qualify for admissions uh, to colleges and universities. Also, approximately 12% of the uh, population uh, have uh, their bachelor's degree and only 5% uh, have their graduate degree. Overall, we felt that um, given the education of Latinos, one of the things that we uh, do do is we contribute um, to the economy. And an interview with Johan um, Hernandez from um, Sac City Community College, first generation student, one of, the, one of the comments that he shared when it came to um, our status is that we may not run business, but we surely keep it running. And the Hispanic Chamber is really most interested in creating an opportunity for policy for the status of Latinos. And so we have created conversations with the county, with the city, with various corporations, um, having champions to start talking about policy for Latinos um, regarding home ownership, uh, education attainment, closing the gap, financial literacy and civic engagement. Our goals also are the future of work and the workforce development here in this region. 
and consistent and significant investment in Latino programs so that our, our community can also be uplifted. And finally, we're looking at our uh, government partners and our private partners for a regional economic approach to help leverage partnerships, resources, and public funds to develop a strategic uh, uh, plan for inclusive uh, and prioritizes the economic well being of all people in this region. And so, on behalf of Sac State and the Sacramento Hispanic Chamber, we look forward to uplifting more conversations regarding these priorities and to continue the engagement of our government and private partners to see what type of progress we can make over the next year. As you can imagine, Sac State is very pleased to be a partner in this report, but also the Hispanic Chamber looks forward to increasing the number of Latino owned businesses. And with that, thank you, Noel, for inviting me this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to engage our students. No, thank you, Rita. I, I really appreciate your incredibly eye-opening uh, information that you shared from the um, State of Hispanics report. And thank you to thank, thank you for wearing both of your hats as part of our Sac State family and as part of the um, Sac Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, but now I, I'm happy to uh, begin introducing our panelists for today with a little bit about them, as promised before. I know that uh, a lot, all of you, even if I can't see you, are jumping out of your chairs now just uh, with the anticipation having built, been built. Um, I'll start with Leslie Valdivia. So Leslie is the co-founder and CEO of Vive Cosmetics, which is a Latina-owned, operated uh, beauty brand. And they are creating a space in the beauty industry for meaningful and diverse uh, Latina, Latinx, Latine representation uh, by building a brand that truly reflects the community. Since launching in 2017, her company um, has been recognized by various national media outlets, um, including Oprah Magazine, Teen Vogue, BuzzFeed, CNBC, HuffPost, and, and many more. Um, in 2017 and, and 19, she was awarded the Rising Star Award from the Sac State Alumni Association um, Latina, and, um, and the Latina Rising Estrella Award from the Sacramento Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, respectively. Um, she is the proud daughter of Mexican immigrants and farm workers and a first generation uh, alumna of Sac State where she received a bachelor's degree in communication studies. Uh, now David and uh, Nancy Garcia will do uh, their um, introduction together as co-founders and current owners of Culture in Sacramento and um, Woodland. And um, they also have uh, a store uh, called Colores in Old Sacramento. Um, but, they were, but David was raised in Galt, California, and Nancy grew up in Marysville, California, and both were inspired and motivated by their parents who were migrant workers. Um, they're both Sac State alumni and both um, from the camp program. And their beautiful and colorful Mexican culture has really been what's driven and inspired all of the merchandise that they import from Mexico. Uh, and then their biggest pride and joy is their 10-year-old daughter, Olivia. Uh, Julio Ortiz, um, is, is the next uh, panelist that I'll introduce. Uh, he is an entrepreneur and business advisor, public speaker, and social media influencer. Uh, I know there's a, a term, a jack of all trades, and, and perhaps that applies to Julio here um, because he also currently serves on two boards, has a full-time job, and is the CEO of not just one, but two family businesses. Uh, he, he migrated from Michoacan, Mexico, finished and uh, anyone from Michoacan, I feel like that's obligatory when someone mentions their hometown. Uh, I, sh I should have done it for Galt and, um, and Marysville too, but feel free to add in the chat if you are. Uh, finished his education at Sac State and opened Gaspachos, which is, uh, and his optimistic and dedicated character have been the vehicle to drive his success, self-growth, and serve our community. And the last panelist that I'll go ahead and introduce here is uh, Mr. Omar Gonzalez. Uh, who is a 1992 Sac State and Kemp alumni um, and from 1996 graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science and a minor in Spanish. Mr. Gonzalez also graduated from the UCLA law, uh, School of Law in, in 1999. And his firm specializes in personal injury, worker compensation, and wrongful death matters. 
Mr. Gonzalez is also involved in various charitable community organizations uh, that focus on bettering the educational opportunities uh, for immigrant Latino as uh, populations, as well as for just the greater Sacramento community in general. So with all of that information uh, now having pro been provided to everyone, please, please help me in welcoming all of our panelists. You can do reactions on the Zoom, you can put in the chat, and in spirit, I know that you will have been clapping and doing the drum roll. So please help me welcome our panelists. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start uh, with the first question. So the first question that we have uh, for all of you is, what has your entrepreneurial journey been like since you graduated college? Uh, what have been the major challenges and opportunities along the way? And we'll go ahead and start with um, Leslie and we'll go in the order that panelists were introduced. Hi, thanks um, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I think my entre entrepreneurship journey really uh, didn't start until after I graduated. As a Sac State student, I definitely didn't think about being a business owner or um, creating a company. Um, as Sac State, I was very focused on my major, which was communications and public relations. And that's what I really thought I was going to do. Um, I think then after graduating and working at various organizations, um, nonprofits and PR and marketing agencies kind of led me to that path of entrepreneurship. Um, so I definitely feel like um, your a journey is not linear. Um, and even as a Sac State student, I changed my major three times. Um, and then after Sac State, I've had jobs where I was working a full-time job and trying to grow my brand and company at the same time. So I think um, it's important to be open to not having uh, like a vision or an expectation that you have to do this or you have to follow in a certain steps. I think everybody's journey into entrepreneurship is really different. And I think it's definitely something to honor. Um, but it's been a long one, um, but it's definitely been uh, worth it also. Thank you, Leslie. And we'll go ahead and go to our next panelist, which should be um, David and David and or Nancy Garcia from uh, Culture. Can you hear us? We can hear. I, I I can hear you a little faintly. Oh, I'll speak louder. Is that any better? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for having us. Um, nice to see familiar faces. Um, I like what Leslie said about it not being linear, right? So everybody's path is different. And um, going along kind of with what Julio said, jack of all trades, um, myself, I still have a full time job as well. Um, and I wear different hats. Also, I'm a mom, a wife, and all that good stuff. Um, but it's very exciting to be able to grow our business and to expand our business. Um, it's definitely been a long journey, and we, you know, come from migrant backgrounds, went to Sac State, and thankfully, you know, here we are. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely been a learning experience. Um, I think a lot of times we do things backwards and we don't know what we don't know until we're there, right? But um, we've had a lot of uh, bumps in the road, uh, but it's fun. I mean, we can't complain, it's fun and get to meet a lot of great people. One yeah, well, no, just like um, she said, it's, uh, it's definitely um, challenging at times, but very rewarding. Um, like, like my wife said, you meet a lot of people, great people, become good friends, great friends. You run into them all the time. You're able to share a lot of uh, stories and help each other out throughout the process. And I mean, you learn from those bumps on the road and you keep moving forward, you know, and I guess that's all you can do is just keep pushing forward because if you quit, I mean, I don't think that's in our, in our DNA to, to quit and back down. So we're going to always strive to to better, better our, for our, for our family, you know, our parents did their part to help us out. Now we're doing our part to help our, our daughter and our families out. 
Thank you. We'll go ahead and go to you next, Julio. Thank you again. <clears throat> Every, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Shout out to Camp, Sac State, EOP, Summer Bridge, you name me. Any program you can think of, I was part of. And I uh, feel very, very proud and lucky to be where I am today. Um, my journey, just like everybody else, has been, has been one of a kind. Um, up and down, I think on a daily basis, just when I think I, I, I got to figure out, it's like, crap, something else came up, right? Um, I somehow got something that sometimes I wonder, why can I just be more relaxed about it, right? But I wanted to highlight is that, you know, entrepreneurship is not necessarily always about owning your own business. It's also owning your own success. Um, I, that's how I always looked at it, right? At 21, I was already a bank manager, and it was because I wanted to uh, prevail. I wanted to do more. I wanted to be more. And make no mistake, I think owning your business, the best and greatest thing ever on earth. One, because you add value to com community, you create opportunity for such employment, um, you know, you get a contribution to society, such as paying taxes, that type of thing, not that I enjoy it much, but uh, for me, it's been an extremely, extremely difficult journey in a sense of, um, you know, uh, it's, it, it, could, it, could, it could be a little rough. And, and unless you have that mindset, and, in, in, you know, so you mentioned two things, opportunity and challenges. I think the biggest challenge is overcoming that mindset because coming from my parents didn't go to school, right? Um, I also picked drivers in Watson, California when I just came here, right? So no one really taught me that you could make it and you can go to uh, college, you can uh, have a business, that type of thing. And so I had to work on my mind since I can think of, uh, since I can remember and having mentors was the key to me. And I think the, the, so that would be probably the biggest challenge overcoming that, that we're taught that it's gotta be a certain way. And even entrepreneurship, right? That, hey, this is the sequence. And that happens even right now, right? You go and seek out alone and they tell you, it's gotta be this way, but it is your job to persuade and to uh, hopefully encourage those people to believe in you and take a, a leap of faith. Uh, because you believe in it so much, right? And I think as a, as a biggest um, opportunity uh, to me, it's been uh, to be able to see that I, I, you know, I make myself proud. I make my mom proud. I make my family proud um, and being able to once again to add value by generating employment and, and, and being able to, to add value to the community. So again, extremely lucky. Uh, obviously, we don't have enough time to share a lot of it, but uh, I, I commend everyone, you know, it's great to see Leslie, it's great to see uh, Nancy and, and David and the rest of you. I mean, it's just so cool because these are people that I know for a long time because you run into the community. So how tough. Thank you. And I noticed uh, Omar uh, Gonzalez has also joined us. Omar, you, would you like to um, answer the, the this question again, just because it's been a a couple minutes since I asked it. The question is, what has your entrepreneurial journey been like since you graduated college? And just what have been the major challenges and opportunities along the way? So Omar. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Omar Gonzalez. I'm a camper from 1992. I'm probably a lot older than most of the other panelists. So <laughs> I don't think I've met uh, most of them, but hello to everyone. And I think um, I don't want to uh, regurgitate what others have said, but I think it's really just believing in what you're doing. And I don't want to use the cliche, but when you're passionate about the community you're serving and the clientele, and you're passionate about what you're doing, it never feels like work. And I would just recommend that people take a chance, not be afraid to seize an opportunity when it presents itself. Because the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work out and you'll eventually find your path. But the important thing is to believe in yourself, believe in your dream, and just to go for it. And part of the journey, there's just so much of it, but part of it is as far as any obstacles, I think it's just every now and then, like anybody else, you could start asking yourself, you know, you're doing a good enough job because there's only so many hours in the day. You always want to give more. You always want to give back to the community, especially when we come from campesino families, familias que trabajaron en el campo, que son inmigrantes de México, que somos de comunidades marginalizadas, que no hemos tenido todas las oportunidades. And that's why I think someone such as myself that's been blessed with these opportunities 
has at a minimum a moral responsibility or obligation rather to give back to the community whenever we can, however we can, according to whatever industry we're in. But that's enough about me. I would really like to give an opportunity at some point whenever you deem appropriate for any of the students watching or whoever else to ask questions and I'll answer them as well as I can and in a manner that I think will benefit the students the most. Because when I was a student, it was extremely hard to ever get any FaceTime with an attorney to ask any questions about law school. Things have changed so much with technology, but if there's anybody out there that's interested, I'd certainly be open to answering those questions. And that's why we're here giving up some of our time for the better good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you to all the panelists for um, both answering that first question and also um, introducing yourself. And, and I agree, I think that there's a unique type of learning that happens during the Q&A. So I'm going to, going to try my, my best here to keep us uh, moving in the right direction so we can get to that, that part at the end. Uh, the next question, and we'll go in the same order, is uh, how did your time at Sac State help you in your entrepreneurial journey? And you can answer however you'd like, but we also have a sub-question. Uh, what campus resources and programs had the most uh, impact on you? And I, and this is um, particularly relevant for all of the attendees here. Um, they might be in their first year, they might be in their last year, but they're still um, able to benefit from the resources on the campus. Uh, so we'll start with you, Leslie. Yeah, um, I all I have to say is I love Sac State. Like I am a product of me like literally going there and just like embedding myself in the community. Um, I would really recommend students to like get involved as much as possible. And that that not only in the way of like clubs or organizations, which I definitely did, um, but I also worked on campus. I worked all the jobs, all the way from like serving coffee in the dorms. Um, I worked at the orientation, welcoming new students. And then my last year, I worked at the public affairs office and communications office at Sac State, which I think that's the one that had the most impact on me because I got to go to really cool events on campus. I got to network with people from the community. And that job in my senior year, I felt I made lots of connections, which led me to discover organizations like the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which I actually didn't know about until I was a senior at Sac State and then led me to like oh you know, do I want to intern there um, I also interned at like a million places in the community in Sacramento and I, I was not originally from Sacramento so being there at a student I really got to know the city and seeing where I can embed myself at and just like really being open to opportunities so from that I feel like as a student I've slowly built my network and not really knowing that I was doing that but I think just because I said yes to opportunities I sought out different organizations um, and events and just ways that I can volunteer and just be an asset to somewhere that I cared about I think that's what allowed me to meet people and just grow um, so for that I'm so thankful and I met probably almost everyone on the panel at some point or I've been to their business um, like Julio I, I can say like I met Julio I think as a Sac State student later he was actually the one that um, helped me with my loan for my business so that's a connection there and you know I actually had an interview with Telemundo that I actually had at um, Cultura which they allowed our Telemundo my friend to film the interview there and then I work with Omar through the um through the Mexican Cultural Center and you know working there so I think this is just an example of like when you put yourself out there when you're open to opportunities it just allows you to grow and I think being connected through the campus and then there and then the greater community really goes a long way All right, we're gonna be sharing headphones and we're gonna see if that helps with the audio. So hopefully it's louder now. Um, I will say I was part of everything also like EOP, camp, summer bridge, I did it all. Um, when I went to Sac State, I went with um, a group of friends from my hometown. So we lived together and I already knew some people. So we kind of just kept to ourselves. The one thing that now as a 40 year old looking back, I can say that I wish I had taken advantage of the resources more. Camp was like the hugest thing for us. It was a, it was a lot different back then when we were in school. Um, 
But CAMP to us like made all the difference. So now as business owners, we always give back to CAMP um, and David could speak to this more, but we try to do a fundraiser every year with the exception of last year because of COVID, but we love to give back to the college assistant migrant program. So that was like a huge change for me. Um, I do wish I had taken more advantage of resources. And now as a business owner, I've learned that. And now I definitely do. Um, we have great friends at the Chamber of Commerce, um, along with uh, people still at Sac State, Viridiana, we know well. Um, so we definitely do, did learn our lesson. And now we definitely do take advantage of our resources. Um, so I would say to all the students out there, reach out. Um, I wish that I had back then also, you know, had some kind of guidance, or if I even knew that this was my vision for the future, that I could have talked to somebody and reached out, and maybe I would have had less bumps in the road, right? So if this is anything that interests you all, if you're, you know, thinking about retail or owning your own business, reach out. You know, people are out there that were in your shoes at one point, and we are more than happy to, to give any kind of guidance that we can. Um, I'll let David talk a little bit. I won't hog up our time here. Yeah. All right, just to uh, piggyback on a little bit of that. Um, coming from a small town, you know, I can say I was pretty shy coming into Sac State, really nervous. I mean, Sac State campus is probably 10 times the size of our town. So the fact that it was that big, it was a little overwhelming, but camp was, for me, was probably the biggest help. Um, I went in in 98 and I mean, we, they had a lot of resources. They helped out with, you know, just stipends to help you live. If you're going to live off campus, um, all that was huge. You meet people there that obviously my wife, um, some of my best friends are from my same class of 98 that I still to this day hang out with and consider my best friends. Um, so use your, like I said, your resources, the people around you. Maybe if you don't like clubs, if you like sports, for me, it was sports. I love playing soccer. So I participate in all the intramural soccer, basketball, flag football. I did all of that indoor soccer. And you get to meet people there that you may never meet anywhere else or even in a classroom because you're too shy to talk to them. But through sports, it's easy to communicate with anybody. I mean, that was something that helped me. And then from there, you, you, you start working on yourself to be able to be a little bit more open and being able to talk to people a little bit more and 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 just ask for help you know and i think like my wife said if anybody ever needs anything with uh, retail business anything that we can help with we're, we're here to help out so go camp for sure <laughs> now would you do me a favor and repeat the question Yeah, of course. Let me go ahead and um, I can also post it in the chat. I can start posting the questions if that, that's easier for everyone. How did, but this one is, how did your time at Sac State help you in your entrepreneurial journey? Um, so what campus resources and programs maybe you had the most um, impact on you too? Got it, thanks. As you can see, uh, <laughs> I can also retain for so long and then I have to refocus, but you know, I when I got in, I don't I don't know why I was in a rush. I, I wish I would have taken it a lot easier. I graduated in three and a half years, even as a when English was not my first language, and and you know I didn't I didn't know how to write that well. Um, I, I mean not not that I regret it, by the way. I feel ex excellent about it. But um, looking back, you know, obviously again, the camp as mentioned by Nancy and and, and David. Um, it was huge, super huge for me. But just like Leslie mentioned to me it was all about trying things. It's like, can I go here? Can I go there? I also had the opportunity to join a fraternity. I was part of ASI. I think I was just experimenting. And I think what that's what college is all about, right? It's, it's, that's where you figure stuff out. Now, you might not by then, but once again, it's like it was an opportunity for me to say, hey, let me go try to this program. And as um, Omar mentioned, you know, I won't forget the speakers camp would invite constantly. And what's crazy is that to me, uh, looking back, um, I think the people that had the most impact were the speakers that were brought in by organizations. But at the time, you don't know that. In fact, I remember I'll be, I'll be uh, back then cell phones were just coming out, but I'll be talking to the neighbor, not giving the, the respect perhaps that they deserve. And, and, and I just think 
oh my god what a waste if i would have known that like i would have given 100 percent attention taken notes get up handshake hey great to meet you that was great speaking i think i only did it once um but that's something i perhaps would have done a lot a lot different but the value was tremendous and you don't know that until again you get out and look back and realize that your network was built in college and now you just is your opportunity to leverage on and to me that's kind of how it worked out Yes, and we'll go ahead and, and go to Omar for the same question. Could you repeat it quickly? Yes, of course. Every answers, but I kind of forgot what the question was. <laughs> no, no worries. It's uh, how did your time at Sac State help you in your entrepreneurial journey? So maybe what specific uh, resources and programs on the campus had the most impact on you? You know, I think, and again, not to repeat what others have said, but I think it was really it help cement or, or finish cementing the foundation for my future entrepreneurship, specifically with both going through camp, but also with joining and being active in the Epsilon Sigma Rho fraternity. That was extremely helpful to me. I learned a lot of leadership, academics, socialization. I met a lot of great people who I'm still in touch with today. Working as a recruiter, student assistant recruiter for the camp program, for two years, I had the opportunity to help admit many current community leaders here in the Sacramento Valley, as, as well as other areas who to this day will out of the blue email me and thank me again for having gotten them admitted to Sac State when quote unquote, the odds were against them back then. And now they're successful in their communities and giving back and serving as an example and helping others to pursue their college dreams. So I think that, and also not being afraid to look at other organizations, at different opportunities, different programs. Because I think sometimes there may be a temptation, whether it be culture or whatever, to just quote unquote, I don't know how it is now, but back then there was a, a camp uh, lounge and some of the students just wanted to be there when they weren't in class. And that's fine. And we loved having them there, but it's like, hey, that's a big, beautiful campus. Get out there, go meet people. Because when you get to the real world, whether the business world or just the general community, it's not going to be just the camp group. You've got to get out there, learn, grow, experience, trip, get up, and just, you know, become a more uh, well-rounded person. So I would encourage the students not to be afraid to go out there and learn about the general community. Take some risks, for sure. Thank you. Oh, and looks like there are, are questions starting to pop in, but We'll go ahead and, and wait just until we're done with the, the prompted questions, um, and then we'll head into the Q&A. But it's good to see that there's students have questions for you all. All right, so uh, th so that really, I, th I think we have a really good transition into uh, this next question, and I'll post it in the chat is, what advice do you have for students who are interested in starting their own businesses? And you can really kind of take that for, for however you, you want to. Um, and, and we know a lot of students have families who are, who currently have businesses too. So maybe there's some insight that you have for that, but I'm going to go ahead and, um, and pass it back over to Leslie. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think that's a big question, <laughs> but I think just like two things that come to mind first, um, and I'm really glad Julio and Omar kind of touched on it previously, like mindset, like sometimes it's not even about like the skills you may know, or the people you may know, it's like, literally, sometimes it's just like believing you, like you can do it. And like, really, truly, like, understanding that and just like really feeling it and I think something that I would have told myself like five years ago when I was starting Vive like I didn't come from a beauty industry background I didn't know anyone in the industry I literally had no idea about like how do I make a lipstick um, now I know a lot more but but like even even then and like not knowing anyone and like or anything of what I was passionate about um, somehow, some way that didn't stop me into like creating something that I wanted to see happen. Um, so I think like mindset is number one. And, and to be honest, you know, as like first gen 
people, college students, first, first generation entrepreneur, like I'm still dealing with that and like really like giving myself of grace, um, but also props to how far we've come because it's it's hard. And I think sometimes it's like first generation students, first generation business owners or anything like that. Like our journey has been different and we've come so far and that needs to be celebrated. Um, so to recap, I think mindset is number one and just like really believing in yourself. Thank you. And then we're going to go ahead and Go to Nancy and David. Um, I would say if you're thinking of starting your own business, make sure it's something you're passionate about. So we can all do the eight to fives. We can all work for somebody, get the paycheck, pay the bills, right? But if you're going to start your own business, it definitely needs to be something that isn't going to feel like work. It's something that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, that you're happy to lose sleep over. So definitely find your passion um, and then do your research. Do your research. What is it going to take to start your business, um, you know, from beginning to end as far as licensing and cost of a startup and all of that good stuff. And third, I would say surround yourself by a good support group. Some, you know, your family, your friends, whoever is supported of you. I know for ourselves, we couldn't be where we are today without our friends and our family who have literally come in to help us paint walls, hang things up, sweep the floors. I mean, they're always here to support us. So surround yourself with a good support team, whether it's your friends or your family. You want to add anything? Um, I would say just a little bit of that same thing. You know, the support system is huge. Um, but yeah. You know, I think uh, having a plan, I think we did a little bit backwards when we first started. We didn't really have a, that plan of what exactly we wanted to do. We just kind of jumped into it. Um, but I knew for myself, being in, in, a, in a sales background like my whole life, I, I knew I can do it. It was just a matter of doing it and putting the effort and the time. And like my wife said, you, you're going to lose a lot of sleep um over having your own business um but i think it's completely worth it you know you, you're able to do the things that you want to do once you once you get it going and you're able to um just be happier i think you know you're happier it is stressful but it, you're happier just overall i believe because you're able to control your own destiny in a way that's that's pretty much it So what advice do you have for students who are interested in starting their own businesses? Sorry, guys, I have to reread the questions to make sure I, I answer it. Um, I would say go for it. I likely is um, someone who, who um, you know, uh, probably has already done it, right? Whatever uh, industry or type of business you're thinking about, someone out there is doing it, is doing it very, very well. I would ensure that I reach out to them and say, hey, can, can I still, can I take you out to lunch? Can I buy you some tacos? And, 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 and can you share a little bit about your journey, right? And pick their brain and see what you like and don't like about it. And then once you convince yourself of it, uh, if you strongly believe in it, I would absolutely go out and try it. You don't know. And I think, you know, we often, I mean, obviously you see people here that are doing fairly well, uh, but there's also a lot of value of those people that went and did it and it didn't work out. Um, I think there's tons of value of doing that. And so I, I would probably challenge you to do both and, and realize, hey, I'm going to go out and try it. But keeping in mind that if you're passionate about it, whether you fail or you exceed, um, or succeed, I think um, you'll feel good about it regardless. Because I think that's what businesses are about is going to work, feeling good about it. Because you're either providing a service, creating a product, um, well, uh, adding value to the community in general as a whole. So I, I think that's extremely important. So uh, hats off if you're thinking about it. I think you should go for it. It's pretty cool. Greatest thing on, on, on earth for sure. It's a great feeling. Thank you. And Omar, the same question goes your way. It's uh, what advice do you have for any students who are interested in starting their own businesses? I would repeat what has already been said. And I'd also just say, again, you know, my own way, just don't be afraid. You know, a lot of times, 
you know, as they say, mucha inseguridad, nervios, you know, statistic or whatnot, whatever word you want to use, just go for it. If you really believe in something like that, that you want to do, you're passionate about it, just go for it. But very importantly, you've got to give it 100%. You can't go one foot in, one foot out. Give it an honest try according to whatever timeline you're comfortable with. And then if it doesn't work out, at least you could tell yourself, honestly, I gave it an honest try. It didn't work out. Hey, we'll try another thing. But I think it's worse to say, well, I'm going to kind of try, but not try or this or that. Just go for it 100%. Have no regrets because life's too short. And it's better to have a great memory about something that you tried that may have not worked out versus a regret when you're an old person. Why didn't I try this? Or why didn't I give a little more effort? Especially if you see someone else do what you wanted to do and they succeed at it just because they gave a little bit more effort. So I just say, believe in yourself. We've overcome much bigger obstacles coming from former working families. Just the fact that the students are in the university, that alone is a tremendous monumental win. That alone should give you confidence in yourself, believe in everything that your mom and your father and grandparents and whoever have taught you the fortitude and just take that and run with it and not be afraid. That's the main thing, not be afraid. Thank you. And well, you've, you've all um, inspired me to make an executive decision here. Um, I think there, one of the questions of the two questions or maybe three that we've received from uh, the folks in attendance, there's one that really lends itself to be a, a great segue. But, and I think the final prompted question I have for you all is a good way to end the conversation. Um, but Jose, um, I think asked, how do I get my business idea started and what should be my first step? I think you've all, um, kind of more or less um, touched on that. But if anyone would like, what I'll do is if anyone would like to add uh, one thing, feel free to, to use the raise hand feature. Um, if you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen and click on reactions, and if, if you feel like we've kind of said, said or added everything that you, you know, that you could, we can, um, we can move along. All right, we'll move. So, we'll, so Ulises asked, how did you know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? So how did you know you had it in you? And again, I think um, a lot of you had touched on this, but feel free to raise to do the raise hand tool um, if you'd like to um, maybe add a little more to that. Or just unmute. Um, okay, Nancy and David, go ahead. And this is this is where I think we really have a connection from what's already the com where the conversation is going. So, um, so N Nancy and David, um, if you'd like to kind of share more on that. Um, well, honestly, I would think I think that I don't think there was a time where it was like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't think that was uh, a mindset that I had growing up, just from my parents working in the field and the migrant background. I don't think it ever was an idea. Honestly, it was just from being at school, seeing people, learning from people, socializing, working many different jobs. I worked for California Family Fitness for about five years, managing their gyms. Um, I also interned at a gym when I graduated from Sac State while well, I was still going to Sac State. And I saw that I was working and making money for these companies. And these companies kept growing and growing. And I was like, well, I'm busting my butt and I'm getting paid decent, but I can be doing something for myself. The amount of work and time that I put into this. And that's when I think I realized when I was working for California Family Fitness that I was like, you know, I want to do something for myself. I know I have the drive and the effort. I can put the effort and the time and the passion is just finding what it is that I want to do. And just having the strong roots and backgrounds from from Mexico, you know, I love the the artesanía from Mexico, and we also have our clothing brand that's keeping it's uh, called Keeping It Paisa, uh, which was really taking off just uh, within friends and family, and just started growing. So I think I don't think it's something maybe that is you're you're gonna know right away. It's just gonna take time to. It might just hit you one day, be like, you know what, I really do want to do this, and just go for it, go all in on it, but just do your, do your homework, you know, do a little research on if you are going to open a brick and mortar, obviously you got to find out prices of rent, what it's going to cost and all that type of stuff. But 
there's a lot that goes into it, but the main thing is finding something that you really are passionate about. And, and like I said, I don't think it's something that I, I, in going in high school or even in college, I was like, oh, yep, I want to, I want to open a business. I think it was until after when I was working for people and companies that I realized that, yep, I'm tired of making them money. I want to make my own money. Everything I put into it, I want it back. Um, that's kind of, I think when I realized that, that I wanted to, to be a business owner. Thank you. I, you've left me really thinking um, about what you said. And, and, and I know the students, even though we can't see them all, are probably um, just really digesting you know, that experience, especially if they can relate to it. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, and, and go to now our last question that we, we came up for you. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to Martin and Christopher's questions for the, um, the longer Q&A period. So just to, to give you all a chance to, um, to share in, in meaningful ways, um, let's go ahead and um, reverse the order. So I'm kind of throwing a wrench in here, but, um, but Omar, I think you, you'll appreciate from being able to go first this time around. Actually, um, no, please leave the order the way it was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Whatever you okay. want. Go ahead. I'll play I, along. I, I, I think you'll, uh, I hope everyone will, will really have a lot of um, fun with this question. It's, is there an entrepreneur or mentor that has inspired you? And what we really want to know is, in what ways do you hope to inspire um, and support the next generation of Hispanic Latinx entrepreneurs? So, uh, so we'll go, so not to give you the, the uh, you know, a hard question this, now that we're starting with you, Omar, but we'll go ahead and start with you. You know, I would just say that I hope that the students that are listening would understand and appreciate that, you know, we were sitting right there where you are. For me, it was a little bit longer ago than everybody else, but I would say, you know, back then I probably had a dollar or two in my bank account. I come from a farm working family. Resources are very limited. So I would say, don't think your dream is unattainable. It is attainable. So go for it. And I hope that in a small way or whatever way I can serve as an example to the students of, hey, you can do it. Just like I was sitting right there where you were. And I think the other gentleman, uh, Julio, I think is his name said, you know, he graduated in three and a half years. That's excellent. I myself took four years to graduate. Then I went on to law school and I was one of the youngest, I believe, in the state when I graduated from law school. And it's a big honor because we don't come from a family of people that have even finished high school, for that matter. Maybe not even middle school, maybe not even kindergarten, but just changing that, changing that and changing the possibilities for people in my family, people in my community. So I would really like you guys to understand that you can do it. There's resources. There's a wonderful, wonderful person named Kathy Rodriguez Aguirre, the head of the SAC Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, who is just a wealth of information, as well as being one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. You can contact her. She knows everyone and anyone that can point you to a lot of resources for internships. And just not be shy to ask for help. A lot of times, we're overwhelmed by the help we're getting from camp, from Dr. Viridiana Raya and all her wonderful staff that we feel apenados. How am I gonna ask for that? How am I gonna do that? Don't worry about it. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So don't be afraid to ask for help. As long as it's a decent thing you're asking help with, there's no problem, okay? But ask for help, reach out, follow through, appreciate the help you're given. And, you know, just ask questions and just go for it. That's what I would tell the students. And hopefully you go remember what I'm telling you right now. Because I remembered when the speakers came to camp back in 92, I remembered. There's a gentleman named Marcos Breton. He's the head of the Sacramento Bee now. Not only did he come as a speaker, but I was laughing and just horsing around with some friends, joking around. And in between what he was saying, he politely in front of the class told me to be quiet me regañó, as we say, 
and essentially said, I don't give an F if you don't want to listen to what I have to say, but I'm here trying to help you. And not too long ago, he's a good friend of mine now, <laughs> over a beer, I reminded him about that. And he'd actually forgotten and he got a good laugh out of it. And so did I, but I said, good for you, because I needed that. I needed that. That's the stuff that helps us. So I hope that all of you take this advice and you believe in yourself and you move forward. You don't think I'm yellow. No tenga miedo, no nervios. Nerves of Thank steel. You. Nerves of steel. And we'll go ahead and, and, and jump to uh, Julio next. That's the reverse order now. Sure. And, you know, just in closing, first of all, it's so cool to hear from Omar. Omar, I, I know you might not know this, but we hear from you. Many of us, I'm pretty confident about your name. is has been around for a while. Uh, so it's kind of cool to finally be able to hear you. And now I can see why people talk so highly of you. So thanks for making some time. I certainly appreciate that. Um, you know, I would say for me, I, I think there's like anyone listening right now, I'm confident we all want have people that we want to you know, make proud and inspire. Um, I, and, and, you know, and I think we all also have an obligation to society to hopefully, you know, make a positive contribution one way or another. I think at one point it'll hit you in, in your life. Well, and, and again, it doesn't have to be via owning your own business. You can be in a, in a corporation, a company, and you can kind of uh, go, uh, go up the corporate ladder and, and, and you can make donations. I mean, there's so many ways to contribute, right? So that's kind of how I see life, I think, that we have an obligation to make a contribution. But I think five concepts that I hope as we kind of move on here, especially if you're thinking on business and um, products, services, innovating, um, I, I think I you probably heard everyone not getting technical on the uh, on the business stuff, but rather concepts, right? Concepts like one that I always talk about. There's many things you cannot control, but there's one thing that you have hundred percent control over, which is your attitude, right? It might rain tomorrow, it might have sunshine, but um, you don't know what's it going to look like. But you for sure have the ability to smile or put the best attitude forward. Um, I would say number. Number two, having goals constantly reminding, you know, we had a meeting on Monday with a couple of people on my team, and I said, what's your goal for this week? And I'm not going to lie, I think I've been so busy that I slacked on the oversight, and they realized, what do you mean, what's the goal? It's like, we're going to do this and that. Yeah, that's reactive, but what's proactive? What is it that we're shooting for? Like, you have to be intentional about it, right? So having goals. Number three is you got to have mentors and you got to think of even your friends are your mentors, right? You have two types of mentors, that are those that are given to you, um, like your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, and then those that you choose, such as your friends, your relationships, like this type of people they have today. And I think you have to be intentional about who you even want to go have a beer with. You heard Omar saying who he's having a beer. I, I'm confident he, he, he sees uh, his friend as a mentor. And so... Number four would be uh, training your mind. I mentioned the mindset. I think you have to constantly, um, you know, whether it might be reading books, whether it might be uh, going to trainings, uh, investing on yourself. I think that's something that I did early on, and I'm so proud of it because when I was going to leadership courses, no one else was going. I was the kid in there, but I absorbed it all, and I, I'm so grateful I did that. And lastly, learn how to learn. You know, you got to continue that journey. And I think as entrepreneurs, Leslie said earlier, you have to stay open-minded. I think no matter how advanced or how far out you are, uh, you constantly going to learn something from people or uh, processes or services, whatever that might look like. So uh, hopefully you kind of take that to heart. And again, thank you for having me and uh, uh, I appreciate you all. Thank you. And uh, David and Nancy, we'll, we'll go to you next. All right, so the question was like what mentors we had or what, um, honestly, I think through high school, I maybe had one teacher that was kind of mentoring me that to, to kind of push me to go to college. Um, she actually reached out after I graduated to go speak for its uh, AVID program at Sac State, uh, or uh, sorry, at, at Galt High. Um, that, uh, that she reached out to me and asked me because she came by the store and said, asked me if I can go speak to her class, you know, just to, to talk about the experience I went through in high school. Cause 
I don't think I was really pushing for college all that much until she kind of helped me out. And luckily she did. So that was, I would say that um, her name was Miss Peterson um, was probably one person that helped. But other than that, I mean, you get to school and growing up, we don't have family members. I didn't have any family that were business owners or entrepreneurs or anything like that. So it's not like you had people like you that you can look to, to, to be an entrepreneur. Um, I think you just got to find it within yourself. So now, I mean, I, I hope I can be that person to some of like, even my daughter, my nieces, my nephew, friends, the family, anybody um, that hopefully they can be like, okay, David helped me out with, with certain things to be able to open my business. Or like Julio said, just to move up the ladder in, in, in a corporation and, you know, things like that. So hopefully we can be the people that these students come and ask and that you're on our own family and friends and um, people can come to us and actually ask us questions now and and look up to us to do something that's positive for the community and for their families um, just to to keep moving forward um, i think that's all i have to say do you want to say something? okay um i think for me um, really quick, not just because they were here, but generally thankful. Um, first, I one of I feel a mentor or somebody that inspires, inspires me is Dr. Diaz. Um, she has personally um, supported my visions and ideas. Uh, um, having events at Sac State for Latina women. That's something she sponsored and championed for to have at, on campus. And then another one that has been a personal mentor and somebody who's also sponsored me to attend events has been Kathy from the chamber. And as Omar said, and many other people feel like Kathy is an amazing person and resource um, that I'm extremely thankful for to have. Um, but I think um, it, you know, for the second part of the question is how do we hope to inspire? Um, I, I think just by you know being true to yourself, and doing what you want to do. Um, and also being apologetic about who you are. I think that's a way that I think we're all inspiring and you know having the visions that we want to have. Um, but you know, if, if I can be of support to anyone here looking to do something in beauty or in communications, marketing, uh, I, I'm also a kind of a jack of all trades as um, Nancy has put it. Um, and I'm extremely, open to make help make connections in the community because i'm i'm a recipient of those connections and i just want a, a, a way to pay that forward thank you all and uh, so as we get ready to close the panel i want to make sure we get at least um one of the the student questions that we have for q a uh, but thank you all for the insights that you've shared as part of the uh, already prompted questions so we'll go ahead and have the same format, just um, if you can raise, use the raise hand feature, um, or if not, um, just go ahead and unmute, and I'm sure we'll get it, we'll get it right. Um, if you, if any of the panelists would like to answer uh, Martin's question of uh, what are some of the most effective ways of marketing that you've found? I think that's a very, um, very special kind of question. It's a, a marketing the elusive unknown, right? Yeah. Grab my headphone here. Um, honestly, with technology nowadays, it's all about social media. And I'm sure all of the students who are younger than us know that better than we do probably. <laughs> um, but I would say social media. Um, that's the hugest free marketing tool out there. Um, when COVID hit, we had to close our doors to our shops and it was definitely a trying time. I'm sure everybody went through it, but you know, I was at home and sitting there talking to my husband, just, you know, saying, what are we going to do? Our doors are closed. We obviously can't have sales right now. And instead of just sitting at home, I decided to go to our shops and I would schedule, you know, three, four hours every day. I would announce on Instagram and I would take my niece with me. We would go and just hit social media hard. So we went heavy on Facebook, Instagram, put all of our merchandise out there 
And lo and behold, the shoppers were sitting at home on their couches doing nothing but shopping. So it was great for our business. Um, I wouldn't have had it any other way. And then post COVID, we continued to do what we had started to do and it's still successful for us. Uh, we have a huge following on Instagram for all of our shops. People are still shopping. And now with our old Sacramento location, we're shipping out a lot. So our followers are from all over the US and we even get um, people from Canada, you know, that are not in the US asking if they can shop and have sh stuff shipped to them. So it's huge for us. Um, that would be what I would think would be the biggest marketing tool for us is just uh, social media. Thank you. And just to, to uh, ambitiously try to tackle all the, all the student questions that came in, um, Christopher asked, how do I work on my people skills? And, they, and he said, for example, just learning how to socialize better. I imagine that's a key skill uh, for promoting and, and kind of um, pitching, you know, one's own business, but I'll leave it to you all since you're the, the ones who know and the experts. Um, would anyone like to uh, maybe answer this question? I can answer that. Um, I, I would try to join an organization, especially at the beginning of the school year where they have literally they have like socials where you're like forced to do an activity and like talk to people. I think like putting yourself in like it can even be a little uncomfortable, but like there's other people doing the same activity as you, which I think makes it less intimidating to just like, you know, kind of get yourself out there. But uh, yeah, at the beginning of the school year, is, I think is the best time to like meet people. And obviously, I assume that it's almost the end of semester. So come next semester at the beginning, just check out, you know, I know there's booths on campus. If you guys are back on campus, I would just approach and say, hi, like I'm interested. I think that's the best way because it's not awkward. Like those, the students there promoting their clubs are expecting you to talk to them and then see kind of where that goes. Um, I know it's kind of awkward, especially Zoom nowadays, right? It's a very different environment, but I'm sure there's still um, Zoom events. I know that I've seen be promoted on Instagram Program, but it might be a little awkward at first, but again, just try something new. I think that's the best way. Thank you so much. And we're going to go ahead and, and start concluding here. But thank you to the students who asked questions. We know it's uh, it, it, you're putting yourself out there to learn alongside your peers. And Thank you, thank you, thank you to the panelists for sharing all your stories with us, uh, being being vulnerable with the students and and really just uh, providing those golden pieces of the golden nuggets of information that I know a lot of the students will remember um, for years to come. Uh, but now we're asking you to, to please complete the uh, closing poll that we have on your screen. It, again, it really, really helps us to see how just how far we've come in this uh, past hour. And, and yes, please um, add any uh, Instagram handles that you might have all of our panelists um, onto the chat. And it looks like we're we have um, a good amount of respondents so we can go ahead and close the poll and share the results. Uh, so we went from um, a lot of not familiars with the entrepreneurial process and some and you know a good amount of somewhat familiars to now a majority of very familiar and somewhat familiar. So um, panelists, you, I thank you for um, share, uh, just getting us to this place where students at least are uh, have their feet wet in what the process to um, push forth their own ideas looks like and motivating them. Um, I also wanna thank all of the partners for being here and for, um, and for helping with the event's uh, success. So camp, the camp program, Dr. Diaz, Carlson Center, uh, Cameron Law, and Arlene Miranda, uh, thank you so much. Um, your dedication is, it comes through and it helps all of us, but especially helps the students. Um, but with that, I'd like to wish everyone a very great rest of your day because we're all about um, being punctual here. So thank you, panelists. Thank you, attendees. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.